Hi there. Welcome to Coding Across the Curriculum, where I'm going to show you how to use coding in other areas of the curriculum. Today, we're going to be using Scratch to make a quiz, much like this one. This could be used for pretty much any topic that you're learning about in school. You can make a quiz to test what someone has learned about something. You can use it after you've learned something new to show what new things you found out. For example, you can make a quiz in mathematics to test how well someone can solve a problem. A quiz to teach someone a new language, a quiz to show some new ideas you've learned about circuits, or anything else your mind can come up with. We'll be using three special sets of blocks to do this activity. The first is ask and wait and answer blocks. The second is the if then else blocks and the green operator blocks. And the third set of blocks are the variable blocks. If you want to skip to a different part of this video, because maybe some of it's too easy, Click on the timestamps below in the description. Enjoy! The ask and wait block does exactly what you think it does. It asks your user a question and then it waits for the answer. It stores that answer that you, that you give it in a special block called the answer block. Think of the answer block as a box like this one. You can put anything in it and it stays there. So if I ask my user a question and this is the answer I get, it's in the box. However, if I ask it another question and I get this answer, the program will put this answer in the box and this one is gone. You can find the ask and wait and answer blocks in the light blue sensing blocks here and here. The if then else block asks the program to make a decision. The first thing it does is ask a question. If the question is true, then the program does whatever is in the then part of the block. If it's false, the program then does whatever is in the else part of the block. You can find the if then else block in the yellow control section. It looks like a big E. We need to use a green operator block to decide which of these two options we will use in our program. In this case, we are going to use the equals block. The equals block works by comparing two objects. For example, if we put one in the first bit and one in the second bit, one does equal one, so the, the block returns true. And in this case, it would go into the first option that we would put the code here. If we change the code and we say one equals two, well, that's not true, so it's going to return false. Now, if this block is put in that spot, it will skip the coding that's in that first section there, and it'll go to the else coding down below there. The last set of special blocks we'll be using today are variables. These blocks are kind of like the answer block. They act like boxes that you can put things into, like numbers or words. So for this example, if I put in five blocks here, and I ask the box to keep those for me, and if I come back in 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and I say, hey box, how many blocks are in there? It's going to tell me 5. You can make a variable by going to the orange data section right here and clicking on make a variable. For every time you make a variable, you want to make it, you want to name it so that it's something that you remember what it is. In this case, we're going to name it score. If you want to use your box, it's right here. However, if you look, our score says zero right now, so I'm going to pull out a set score to zero bot block, and I'm actually going to click on five. And I click it, and it is five here now. The great thing about variables, though, is that if you want to change them, you can use the change variable block and dragging it in there. If I click on this block now, it's going to change my variable by one. So if I add one more, it's going to be six now. So going back to my previous example with this box, if I add another blo block to it, and then I ask later, hey box, how many are in there? It's going to tell me six. Now we're ready to put all the blocks together to make a quiz. The first thing I'm going to do though is to change my sprite for something more appropriate. My quiz is going to be about dinosaurs, so lucky for me, there are some dinosaur sprites here. I'm going to have to get rid of the cat sprite so that I only have one sprite. So I right click and I delete. 
The next thing I'm going to do is also change my background. And I do this by going to the backdrops and clicking on a new backdrop and I can pick from the library. I'm gonna pick a really simple one and hopefully it will load very quickly. I'm going to move my dinosaur and place him here. So we're going to go to the scripts now and every program needs to start with an event block. So I'm gonna click or pick the when green flag clicked. The next thing we needed to do was we need to start with our question block. So I'm going to ask a question about the dinosaurs and I'm going to say dinosaurs went extinct 75 million years ago. True. And I'll put the T in um, brackets or false and I'll put an F in brackets so that the user knows exactly what we're going to ask. Now I'm going to use one of those control blocks. If then else, um, my operator, and I'm going to put my answer as if the answer equals false, because that is the correct answer in this case, then I'm going to put my dinosaur to say that's right dinosaurs did not go extinct 75 million years ago it was 65 million years ago and if they were wrong i'm going to put them to say sorry dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. We have not yet put our variable in, so I'm going to go to the data. I'm going to set the score to zero at the beginning. And then if there's a right answer, I'm going to change the score by one. So there you have it. There is my first question. Now it's your turn. See if you can make your sprite ask one true or false question. Pause the video while you work. It's really important when we are coding that we learn how to check and debug our programs as often as we can. We want to catch our mistakes early and fix them before we have too many lines of code to sift through. I'm going to run my code and try two different cases, a true answer and a false answer. I want to make sure that my program works exactly how I figured it out in my head, so I need to test every case, both wrong answers and right answers. So I'm going to run the program by clicking on the green arrow and answering the question. The first thing I'm going to do is check to see if the correct answer works. So I'm going to type in false. And I get the right answer. That's right. Dinosaurs did go extinct 75 million years ago. It doesn't stay on there very long. So what I'm going to do is change that to four seconds because I've learned now that the user is not going to be able to read that in time. I'm going to try that again. And this time I'll try with a small f to see if that case works as well. Small f. And that's right, dinosaurs did not go extinct 75 million years ago. It was 65 million years ago. I now need to try the case that I put the wrong answer in just to make sure that, um, that that's what the user gets if they do put the wrong answer in. So this time I'm going to try true. And it says, sorry, dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. And notice how the score also does not change. So my program works exactly how I thought it should. In future videos, we'll have a look at debugging, which is where we find and fix our mistakes. Stop the video now and try your program. Does it do what you want it to do? Once we've got one question that works, we can easily make a second one. A quiz with only one question is not very much of a quiz. There is no need to bring all the blocks in one at a time again. We can just copy a whole chunk of them. The first thing you need to do is separate the blocks that you want to copy from the rest of the code. Then right click or press Alt and click the mouse on a Chromebook or Control and click the mouse on a Mac and you'll see a short menu. 
you want to choose Duplicate. You will need to change the details in the blocks to your new question. Let's try this new question. Humans and dinosaurs did not live at the same time. True or false? Humans and dinosaurs did not live at the same time. True, P, or false, F. Oh, the answer for this is true because we did not live at the same time for them. Then we're going to need to change our answers. That's right. Um, humans and dinosaurs did not live at the same time. I can probably make that three seconds or even two seconds. Let's see when we test it. We'll find that out. Um, and then, sorry, humans and dinosaurs did not live at the same time. You can repeat this process as many times as you'd like. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to do it twice. Um, and make sure that every single time you both change your answers and test your questions to make sure that they give you the answers that you are looking for. Now it's your turn to add more questions. Pause the video and try it. When you're done, unpause the video and I'll show you some things you can add to your program to make it more interesting. There are a lot of things you can do to make your quiz interesting. I'm going to show you three. Adding some text at the beginning to explain what the quiz is adding pictures, and having your character move every time there is a correct answer. Feel free to add these if you want, but don't feel that you need to. This quiz is incomplete. I've made my questions, but there are missing parts. I've first got to explain what the quiz is all about, which is identifying flags. I'm going to write a few lines of speech for the sprite. The first is going to tell them what the quiz is about. I'm going to show you some flags. Second is going to tell them what they need to do. Can you name the countries? Question mark. The next thing I'm going to do is get some images. I'm going to search for New Zealand flag. And when you search for images, what you need to remember to do is clicking on the images and you click on tools and make sure that you select under usage rights, labeled for reuse with modification. You're going to then to want to right click and save the image as, and label it something that you know you'll remember. So for example, this one is going to be New Zealand. Back in Scratch, you want to pick the Upload Sprite from File button and choose the image that you just saved. Once it loads, you're going to want to move it onto the screen where you want it to be and choose the event block when green flag clicked and we want it to hide then. So what, when the quiz starts, we don't want it to be there just yet. You're going to go back to the event blocks and pick two of these when I receive message blocks. It just says message one there, but we can make our new message. So the first one is going to be when I receive message hide. And when I receive message New Zealand. So when we see those messages, the first one, when we receive hide, guess what? It's going to hide. And when we receive New Zealand, it's going to show. We're going to go back to the dinosaur block and we are going to go to the broadcast New Zealand um, in front of the New Zealand flag question and at the end of that we are going to go and put just need to move that down broadcast the hide block now we are going to need to do this for all of the sprites so i'll let you do that on your own and when we come back it will be done on this one the last thing i'm going to show you is how to make the sprite move after a correct answer i'm going to keep the movement simple but you can experiment with it one of the examples at the bottom of the video has some elaborate movement if you want to take a look at it later. We're going to use another message block. 
So we're going to call this new message celebration. And for this block, we're going to just make the, the sprite move up and down by a little bit. So I want to change the Y by 10. And I'm going to then change it by minus 10. So it moves back to where it started. Now when I click on that, nothing happens. So the reason for that is, is because it does the two things without actually taking a break. So I'm going to add a weight block in between the two of them. And that will go for 0 0.1 seconds. When I click on that, you can see it go up and down. However, I want to make them go up and down three times. So I'm going to do repeat three. And so there, you can see he's kind of excited. So the last thing we need to put in this is to broadcast that message. So I'm going to choose this here, broadcast the celebration message. And I'm going to put one in after every single correct answer, which in this case is only three times. You might want to do it earlier if you've got a longer set of questions, but in this case, it is not too um, onerous of a task to do this. And there you have it. Now when I play the game, it's going to show me some flags. And if I write in the correct answer, you're going to see him jump up and down and put the next country's flag up there. Oh, thanks. Now it's your turn to add some things to your program if you'd like. Pause the video and have a try. That's all for now. I hope you've learned something from this. Please check the descriptions for links to some sample programs. You can also click on the timestamps to review any parts of the video that you didn't quite get the first time. If you've used this video to make any quizzes, please post a link in the comments. We'd love to see what you made and, would, and it would help anyone else watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please click subscribe down below and watch our other videos which will be coming soon.